It's like the moment before I dive, there's like this sense of calm. And then when I leave, it's like my mind and my body just knows what to do. It's such a rush. I mean, it is a lot of fun. You, you feel the blood pumping. You feel like you're alive again. Cliff diving is the art of falling. For three seconds, we're trying to master gravity. Imagine jumping from a 27 meter tall, eight story building. The impact of this jump is unbearable for untrained people. It breaks the body if you're not ready for it. By its simplest definition, cliff diving is exactly what it sounds like. Highly trained athletes leap from almost three times the Olympic height of 10 meters. They hit the water at speeds of up to 90 kilometers an hour, protected only by their concentration, skill, and physical control. The fascination for me in cliff diving is the confrontation of a diver and their fear. Every time we're on the platform, we know what can go wrong, we know the dangers, but each time we find a way to make that leap. So then let's leap right into it. Over the next 26 minutes, we're going to present to you the ABC of cliff diving. We take a look at its origin and the legends of the sport, the necessary training for body and mind, the magical locations, and of course, the stunning dives. To help you along the way, we've created special flashcards with cliff diving terminology and dives. Take for example the phrase, pike. Dive position with knees straight and a tight bend of the hips. We're labeled as cliff divers and that's something actually we're all very proud of. If you look at the history of the sport, um, that's definitely how it started directly from the cliff face. Many people believe that Acapulco, Mexico is the birthplace of cliff diving, but it actually originated in Hawaii. 18th century Hawaii. Legend has it that the king of Maui, Kahikili II, would demand warriors to leap feet first off a cliff to land in the water below. It was a way to show their king that they were fearless, loyal, and bold. Today, cliff diving combines the technique of high diving with the demands that nature places on sportsmen and women. 1999, September, Lake Havasu, Arizona. Red Bull Cliff Diving's inaugural event is known as On the Rocks and attracts a fleet of partiers and curious onlookers. Eight divers from around the world are set to participate. Some have championship diving backgrounds, while others perform high diving shows in theme parks. The setup was like huge. I mean, the platform was enormous. You know, the, the whole TV setup, everything was, was big. You know, I'm not used to that. You know, you're in front of all these cameras, all these things. And off it went to serious business. Back in May 2009, the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series kicked off in a French city called La Rochelle, which literally translates as Little Cliff. Ten years after the first event in Arizona, 30,000 spectators gather around the platform and the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series is born. In 2014, another milestone was reached when the Women's World Series was created. The female divers joined the series diving from 21 meters, making big impressions. The main reason we have a difference in height is not because the women can uh, have any less ability. In fact, they have the same abilities as the men. It's just um, a physical restriction. I mean, they just can't quite handle the impact from that height. It's just a scientific fact that usually men are a little more sturdy. They're more muscular. They can handle the impact more. So the lower height helps us to keep our bodies from injury a little better. When I watch the girls, I, I'm really dialing in on their lines because you know their toes are usually immaculate and the dives are, are simple and beautiful and, and that's something I strive for still. One who perfected this skill is Australian Rhiannon Nifflin. In her rookie year, 2016, she won her first ever competition as a wildcard entry in the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series, making her also the youngest female diver ever to win an event. I kicked goals I, that I never thought that I would achieve in, in my whole diving career, and I did it in my first season. She began diving at the age of nine, 
And before that, she was an avid acrobatic trampolinist. I'm a little bit burnt out of going to the aquatic centre on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, doing the same thing, the same routine over and over again. I'd always followed Rebel cliff diving for many years and I thought it was just absolutely amazing and I kind of dreamed to be on the World Series and I never actually pictured that, that I would be there or be on top. Rihanna Niflam, what a superb athlete. Wow. Next to traveling and exploring breathtaking locations, Rhiannon has her eye on collecting the next world titles. I think it's very important for myself to set um, small goals along the way, um, just to make that, that ultimate goal more realistic in achieving it. The year 2017 was overshadowed by shocking news. Nikki Stojkovic, former Olympic diver and sports director of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series, passed away after health problems during his regular swimming routine. He helped develop the, the rules and the regulations and he was also responsible for the safety and he was somehow a mentor for all of the athletes and, and I think we dearly miss him to be honest. In two days of competition, the divers need to perform four different dives. Five international judges award scores from zero to ten. These scores are multiplied by the DD to generate the score of each dive. DD, degree of difficulty. A calculation based on the difficulty of the execution of each maneuver and the junction of each dive component. Depending on how difficult the dive is, that's what the degree of difficulty is going to be. More flips, more, more twists, higher the DD. So, let's break down the basics of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series to get an understanding of what's going on. Ten permanent male divers and six permanent female divers participate throughout the series. Each tour stop will feature up to four wild cards per gender. The results of wildcard divers will count the same as for any of the permanent divers on that individual stop. Each diver has to execute four dives during every stop. The winner of each individual tour stop is the diver with the highest total score from all four competition dives, and gets rewarded with the highest amount of World Series points. The winner of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series will be the athlete with the highest overall World Series points after all stops. It's still going to get bigger and bigger. It looks like we, we're really going in the right direction to make uh, cliff diving something, uh, something that lots of people like to watch. There's also a well-known face in a new position. Arguably, the greatest diver of all time moves from judge to sports director. Diving legend Greg Luganis lays out his priorities for his new role in the World Series. Obviously, you know, looking out for the diver's safety first, uh, but and also being an advocate for their voice, but also to be a mentor, reminding them to take a breath, you know, and relax. Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series follows the traditional high diving format and is a mix of rules from the Red Bull Cliff Diving Sportive Committee, the World High Diving Federation, and FINA. FINA, Federación Internacional de Natación, the International Swimming Federation for administering international competitions in water sports. The scoring system is pretty simple. Five judges score from zero to 10. The highest and lowest scores are discarded. The middle three are added and multiplied with the degree of difficulty. And it's the hunt for that perfect 10 that keeps divers hungry for more. I really like the hunt of that dream 10, but the fact that we really reach for that 10 gives us access to, to nines and give us access to progression. One dive, it's one million details. That's why you have to know all details. You have to be clear everywhere. If you have small mistake, it's already not 10.
Judges have only three seconds to evaluate three parts of a dive. First, the takeoff. It has to be strong and high, not too close or too far from the platform. I like to see a really strong athletic takeoff because the minute they do that, it grabs your attention. But there is more to a takeoff than just diving off the platform. In diving, there is uh, different groups of diving. Uh, for example, you can stand on the platform facing forward and you're gonna spin forward. That's, you know, that's a forward takeoff. You can stand backwards and you're gonna spin backwards, backward takeoff. And then the next one is a little bit more complicated. You're gonna stand forward, you jump off the platform, you're gonna spin backwards. That's a reverse takeoff. Uh, the next one will be like an inward um, group. You stand backwards and you're gonna spin into the platform inwards. And to make things even more complicated, you can add an arm stand and add the same groups, forward, back, reverse, and then also add twists to it. So there's all these uh, small different elements that a combination of those is what makes a dive. In the rules, you have to show dives from different groups. You need to show your versatility. You can't just be strong in one field and rely on that factor. The next judging criteria is the position in the air. The second part is the flight. The position during the flight, uh, we have the straight. Pike. And tuck position. You follow the dive, the technical aspect, the maneuver, the, really the grace and beauty of the dive. In the air, you need to have your hands perfectly straight, good position, just the, the hands, the toes, the knees, everything has to be in the right place. The dive has to be the right rhythm. The third judging criteria, the water entry, is the toughest one. Not only in its achievability, but also on its impact to the diver's body. It has to be without splash, we call it a rip entry vertical, so not over-rotated or under-rotated and not twisted. It's the entry, it's the very last thing we see and the last thing we remember. And uh, that can have a big impact on your scoring. Sounds pretty easy. Just don't make a big splash. That's the one! But that's not the diver's only thought when they hit the water at up to 90 kilometers an hour. You can do as many weight sessions as you like. You can't simulate hitting the water like that. Um, going from 85, 90 kilometers an hour to zero in a split second, there's no real program that you can do that simulates that. Compared to the Olympics or other competitions where the height is just 10 meters, cliff diving competitors hit the water feet first because the impact is far too great for a head first entry. I love the flight, I love the dives. That's the enjoyable part for me, but it's uh, withstanding that impact, which is very important, and that's, that's what frightens me the most. I start prepping for the impact right before I hit the water. That is a really hard strain on certain muscles, and that's where I feel the most soreness after every competition. Once you start dropping, then you are at the uh, beck and call of nature's, Mother Nature's uh, gravity. That gravitational pull just accelerates you and uh, you know, you're reaching two to three Gs of force when you hit the water. To hit the water and knowing that you're okay and, and know that you've gotten through it is, makes you want to go up there and do it again. After coming up to the surface, the divers are not alone and their guardian angels are waiting for them to give the okay sign. The scuba divers in the water is a safety thing. Obviously, at these events, it's, it's safety first always. Um, and it's kind of a comfort thing for us to know that they're there if anything goes wrong. They also have the added role of, of sort of splashing the water, which just creates a visual for the divers so we really know where the surface of the water is. The feeling after doing a successful entry is, is like no other. I mean, taking that first breath after you've done a, a great dive is, is honestly, it's the best feeling on earth for us cliff divers. What will leave you breathless is the athleticism required to perform the sport's most difficult dives. We have a degree of difficulty formula to help us understand the different levels of the maneuvers. So all the dives have a different uh, variation in the number of somersaults and twists that they have. So we need this tariff to help us understand how hard the dive is. So obviously the more somersaults and twists that you add, 
the more difficult the dive. Somersault. Diver's body rotating 360 degrees around a horizontal axis, with the feet passing over the head. For the male divers, the competition shall consist of one required dive of a maximum degree of difficulty of 2.8, one intermediate dive with a maximum degree of difficulty of 3.6, and two optional dives assigned a degree of difficulty calculated from the DD table. For the female divers, the competition consists of two required dives with a maximum degree of difficulty of 2.6, and two optional dives assigned a degree of difficulty calculated from the DD table. I think it's impossible to, uh, to come to the competition with an uh, easy dive, even if you hit it really well. In fact, the judges are not supposed to take DD into account. Their scores are multiplied by the DD afterwards, so they just have to take every dive individually and try and pick out the faults. And Englishman Gary Hunt knows how to pick the right dives. In 2016, he executed his most difficult dive, front three somersaults with four and a half twists free. He named it double in, double out, which will be calculated today with a DD of 5.6. But that's not all. Gary has amassed outstanding numbers and records in his unrivaled career on the World Series so far. More than 30 victories and over 60 podiums. In about 76 competitions, he has not missed a single event. To stay the champion is definitely harder than to become the champion. To raise the bar, when you're the one that's holding that title, it's, um, it's definitely something that's very tough, but um, that's what you have to learn, and that's what, that's what it takes to be the champion. His most successful weapon, the triple quad. Formerly unthinkable. In the meantime, he's no longer the only one performing this dive, which makes Gary Hunt the role model. It's definitely what I strive to be, is, is somebody that, that other people can uh, can look up to and, and, and want to be like. Gary, I mean, is just unreal to watch him dive. He's kind of established himself as, as the legend of this era so far. I feel so grateful to have lived and laughed and dived alongside him. It's, it's fantastic. He comes in super consistent, he's got the big dives, and, and he does them well and, and almost effortlessly, you know what I mean? And that's something we kind of are all striving for. We, we kind of want to be like Gary. What does it take to be as successful as Gary? Hard training for your body, and most importantly, your mind. Let's face it, cliff diving from 27 meters is a serious sport, and not something you do on your beach holidays. A diver needs perfect aerial orientation and the skills to do multiple twists and somersaults. Therefore, special training and skills are needed. You need to have the fundamentals down. That's probably the most important thing, the fundamentals of diving. On top of that, you need to be mentally stable. You definitely need to look at a situation and figure out how you're going to overcome it. And the same goes for creating a new dive. You have a dive in your mind. You come to pool and cut the dive for different pieces, for a few pieces, and start to practice some takeoff, twist, somersault rotation, entry. And when you come for 20 to 27 meters, you just take the species of dive and make one big one. Before the season starts, the divers can visit training camps. It really helps when I get a chance to see on the screen my dive after, because I have my coach giving me some advice, and I can directly see what he says. It's kind of if I do twice the dive. They not only train from the platforms, they also use dryland gyms and other facilities to sharpen their skills. In high diving, you're doing the skill just on the way down. Rush and swing, you have time to do the skill on the way up and still on the way down. So you get that muscle memory, that muscle movement. I've been training the entry portion of my dives, obviously more than anything, really doing the neck stability with some of the chains on my forehead. And um, those are some of the positions I would like, you know, as I'm moving through the branny to the water. Branny. One forward somersault rotation with a half twist, used as an entry maneuver. It is very easy to get out of control and start twisting, over rotating or under rotating. With the Branny, the divers are able to bend at their waist, look at the water, and have the control of a safe entry. 
It's a really important part of the dive. If you can't control the Varani, you can't control the entry. You can train as much as you want, but when you get onto that 27 meter board, it's really your, your head that takes over and uh, you have to be mentally tough and strong to convince yourself. The diver, when he leaves uh, the, the cliff, he needs to focus on certain targets. Once they get lost, it's like being in a, a washing machine okay. where you really become, can become disorientated. I imagine my dive's going perfectly, because if you can convince your brain of one thing, your body's a lot more likely to follow suit. People think that we are thinking a lot when we are in the platform, and, but actually we don't. We just, we're just really focused in what we have to do. Relaxation is a, it, it's a skill, it needs to be practiced. You can't just expect to relax when a situation gets tense. You know, you have to physically lay down, make yourself nervous, and then practice calming down. I mean, the, the feeling of success and the achievement that you just did in yourself, pushing through that fear and, and your persistence and your determination, it really is like nothing else in this world. And, and it gives you a feeling that just overwhelms you with joy and makes you feel like a, like a cliff diver. Besides pushing your own limits and overcoming fears, there is another major motivation that gives cliff divers a lot of joy. The Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series is known for its breathtaking locations. Each year, a new spot shows how incredible Mother Nature is. I kind of had to pinch myself. It was just so exciting to, to start the season off like that in such a beautiful location. I couldn't have asked for anything more. Some of them are not just beautiful, but also quite unique, like the starry most in Mostar, Bosnia and Herzegovina, or the Serpent's Lair on Innis Moor. When it comes to spectacular places and amazing dives, there is only one person who jumps into everybody's mind. My name is Orlando Duque. I'm a cliff diver from Colombia. With 13 world titles, nine Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series event wins, and two Guinness World Records to his name, Orlando is the most well-known athlete when it comes to cliff diving. 1999, young Orlando Duque discovers cliff diving for the first time, already featuring his trademark ponytail. It's been a long career, I'll say. I mean, 20 years to some people might be long, to some other might be short, but uh, in cliff diving, I think it's, it's a pretty long career. And Duque did it all. His adventures around the world were key in spreading the word about the sport of cliff diving, helping it grow. I wouldn't say I'm the ambassador of cliff diving. People recognize my face maybe a little bit more, but it's always been like a big group. You know, it's, uh, it's a lot of people pushing. I've just been the lucky one that managed to, to kind of hang around throughout a few generations. For years, most of the same divers have traveled together from season to season. Of course, the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series is a competition, but the passion for diving also creates strong bonds between the competitors. That's it for the ABC of Cliff Diving. We've guided you through the history of the oldest extreme sport, from 18th century Hawaii to the prestigious World Series it is today. It's not just about the diet. It's all the elements combined that really make cliff diving so special. The adventure, the location, the freedom, and overcoming your fears. We've introduced you to the rules and scores of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Now, you are ready for the next live event. A sneak peek behind the curtain showed us the hard training and mental preparation necessary for this demanding sport. Your heart starts pounding, your heart rate's going up, and uh, it takes a lot of control to overcome that. So uh, for me, the mental side is definitely what outweighs. The 
beautiful locations of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series range, from the frigid natural pools of Ireland to the balmy waters of the Philippines. But exotic locations are just one factor that make cliff diving exciting. Free falling three seconds through the air at high speeds is the real rush. When you're in the air flying, your body just takes over and you, it's an incredible feeling to be honest. That's my vibe. I love to just come out to the competitions. I love the big crowds. I love feeling the energy and the rhythm and the music. The divers and the cliff divers definitely deserve the term cliff diving, even if they're diving from a platform because it is risky and they're incredibly brave. This takes a special kind of human being to, to do these kind of dives and these maneuvers. This takes a lot of courage. So like I take my hats off to these guys. That's it. See you at the next Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series stop.